What's up, everybody? AJ Kirsch back at you. You know the drill by now. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you know exactly when new videos drop, social media, merchandise, upcoming events, all that information can be found in the description of this video. And as you can see by the crutches right about here, I'm about 24 hours removed from knee surgery. I had an arthroscopic procedure to get some scar tissue cleaned out of my left knee that formed as a result of an ACL reconstruction and meniscus repair surgery that I got last year. Awesome, right? Follow up one surgery with another. Um, so I've had to slow down a little bit. That doesn't mean I'm still not creating content for you guys. That doesn't mean I'm missing any shows. Uh, although I am glad to only have one show this weekend. And why don't we talk about it real quick? I will be your host, ring announcer, and live commentator at Hood Slam Presents a Midsummer Night's Meat Train this Friday, July the 19th at the Oakland Metro Opera House. Uh, tickets for that show can be found in the description of this video as well, but it's 21 and over. Don't bring your effing kids. And today we are going to do part five of the wrestling character development seminar I hosted alongside ECW Originals, the quintessential stud muffin Joel Gertner, and the Blue Meanie. And this is probably going to be my favorite part of all of them because Blue Meanie tells a hilarious story involving him, Raven, Paul Heyman, and I think Stevie Richards um, just getting busted by the cops and... Blue, Blue Meanie's like covered head to toe in blue paint. Paul Heyman's egging him on to cut this fantastic promo. Uh, anyway, I'll let Blue Meanie tell it. It's a hell of a story. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Uh, special shout out to the Hannibal TV for letting me use their footage. Uh, they gave me permission to use footage that they recorded from the seminar. So thank you for letting me use it and post it on my YouTube channel. So without any further ado, let's get into part five of the wrestling character development seminar from this year's CAC. Enjoy. We'll get back to questions in just a second. I just have a quick point to make something that you mentioned where your character, when you're building your character, is, I think the phrase you used was, it's the best of who you are. And if you're a heel, it can definitely be the worst of who you are. Um, two years ago, I did a seminar here at CAC alongside Jim Ross on the art of the promo. And the character that I have done since about 2012 now on the Indies and the West Coast is Bros of Joe Brody which is as douchey as it sounds. And one of the very vocal aspects of the character is that he loves Nickelback. And I, see, see the reactions? And I, in real life, love Nickelback. That is not a rib, that is 100% true. And just like it did, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but look at this photograph. <laughs> So happy you got that reaction out of you too as well. <laughs> then it goes a long way to getting your character over. That's the only little nugget that I want to share. Let's get back to questions because this has flown by already. Yes. And it was uh, it was a throwback to Austin Idol, 
Well, he managed in Continental in Alabama, and uh, he was a universal heart throw, so I was the quintessential stuff. I'm a complete throwback. Uh, I think I realized that after the fact, uh, I marked out for it. Um, he let me be the color guy on his product, where I used to watch him when he was the same age that I was at the time, early 20s, be the color guy for WCW. So when he needed to be Paul E with the badge, with the hat, and be who he was in his own company, he couldn't be Paul E dangerously as Paul E was in WCW. He needed one, he went to me. Uh, that was never lost on me. He managed Rick Rude coming up in WCW, and when Rude was with us, I did protagonist, antagonist stuff with Rude, point counterpoint stuff, where we were on the same plane as colleagues. That wasn't lost on me. So that's, aside from the story that I mentioned before, the anecdote where he said, you're worth a million as a heel, but I don't need you right now as a baby face. Uh, that and, and those other things probably come as close to a Paul Heyman story as I have to. Uh, for me, Paul, uh, I was very, I, I thought this thing was two hours, so that's why I was, you know, stretching my interest a little bit. Yeah, I'll give you the uh, cliff notes. Um, for me and Paul, like, the first time I met Paul in the business, uh, I was very fortunate enough to, when I was training with Al, uh, Sabu started running shows in Michigan as NWA. NWA Sabu, we called it. <laughs> and uh, Sabu would do this, these random run-ins on like a random match and just beat people up. They, you know, they fire them up for the rest of the show and stuff like that. So they wanted to do this thing where uh, there'll be a, a loser gets its head shaved match or whatever. And it was me and another student named Sean Brown. Uh, and they wanted to go out there and purposely just have this match and then try to do a thing where I don't even know how the stipulation would have worked, but it didn't matter at the end of the, the match because we're going to think where, aha, we're not getting our head shaved or whatever. And then Sabu, who at the time, Sabu was booking ECW talent. He was booking Taz, he was booking Dreamer, uh, a whole bunch of, and he brought Paul Heyman in for a show. So <coughs> Sabu and Paul Heyman, Paulie dangerously hit the ring on me and my buddy. And it was, I was getting my ass kicked, but it was the hardest thing not to smile, you know? So, yeah, Shabu nails him, nailed me, you know, and, you know, uh, I learned from Paul. It's a little, little lessons you've learned along the way. And I'm down, he goes, he raises his phone to him, he goes, ah, and I need to sit up, take another one. And he would go, ah, I need to sit up, take another one. So long story short, he stiff with that phone. And Sabu was st st stiff with the, the razor. Sabu shaved our heads and all this stuff and gigged this with it. And long story short, I start showing up to ECW and like I'm doing stuff, you know, here and there. And then it wasn't until we like went to, t I went to a, up to the studio TV and Paul goes, You're the kid who shaved his head. I was like, Yeah. He's like, Wow, well, that was cool. That he, he saw I was willing to do whatever it took, you know. Like he said, if you get a chance to ride a rocket ship, don't ask questions. Hey, me, you want me to shave your head? Yes. Paulie, you want to be there? Yes. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. You know, I'm going to look like an idiot for a couple months, but, you know, why not? And it was just an opportunity. And then, um, you know, that Paul saw that as me taking mention of the, but be willing to do anything for, for, for ECW. But like the one time we, I did a, Paulie comes up to me and goes, uh, come up to the studios, we're gonna recreate the gold dust promo with a naked one that's covered with the bell. And uh, I was doing blue dust at the time, so and I was a total pair of naked gold dust. So we go, to, we go up to New York, uh, I have to get painted my whole body, blue, pink, why forget the pink, right? So, <laughs> And Sam is here, me and he forgot the pain. You know, so me and Tommy Dreamer, the king of hardcore, go to the local supermarket to buy uh, cake icing and blue food pie. <laughs> In the house of hardware, yeah. So uh, long story short, 
Tommy Dreamer and Mr. Hardcore were standing in front of a phone with the, the TV studio at his parents' house. I'm in my underwear and Tommy's putting blue cake icing on me. <laughs> and then we have to walk from there two blocks to a local park, <laughs> a little neighborhood park. <laughs> Why not? And it's summer, and there's gnats. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck eating later. Yeah. Uh, Amen. So, uh, so I, I stripped down to my gimmicks. I got I had a little boomy on cover, my gimmick, and uh, we do a run through the promo once, twice. We had redo because you know somebody fought the line or whatever. And uh, you know, I, I I do a little you know, <sighs> but who does? And Paul kind of came up with me because somebody kind of flood the line, but I didn't lose my composure and go ah crap. I stayed in the character, <sighs> blue does, and, you know, cut. Paulie's giving me this. That was great. You stayed in the moment. You know, blah, 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 blah. And the police spotlight shines right on us. <laughs> <laughs> the cops show up. And Steph going like this. I went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm naked. <laughs> covered in blue cake icing. <laughs> There's Paul Heyman. <laughs> Raven. <laughs> Stevie, who's holding two feather dusters. I don't know why. <laughs> Sandman, his wife, and their child. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Bullington, and a camera crew. It looked like a, a demented porno going down. The Cop comes up and goes, and he must have grown up in the area because he looks like I just ruined his childhood, laying on this like little bridge in between the slide and the swing. He goes, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> But I don't want to do the paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, there we go. Let's do two more takes. Right? Shut up, shut up. 